Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I've got a project video for you. Uh, this is the Mario Cube. This is the badly painted one, but thanks to a Buzz Designs, it is a good model. And I want to tell you about how I made this and how I painted this and what's next for the big one. Uh, and I also have a cool sponsor for this video. The Great Courses Plus is the sponsor for this video. Sponsorship allows me to do really cool stuff and to get cool supplies to do really cool stuff. So at the end of this video, please pay attention and at least give it a watch. It's, uh, it'll help me out quite a bit. But until then, let's start with how I started sanding this thing. All right, just like Bill from Punished Props will tell you, all good 3D prints must be sanded. And I spent a lot of time sanding this small block. Thanks again to Lauren from Abuzz Designs for designing this for me. I was using 220 grit sandpaper to get some of these layer lines down. I was printing this block with Matter Hackers Pro Natural PLA, and I printed this on the Ultimaker 2. No, you guys, I'm not kidding. When Bill tells you you need to sand a lot, he's not joking. Sanding this took quite a while. Once I thought I had sanded it enough, I took it outside and I propped it atop a half-used roll of duct tape, and I decided to spray it with some Tamiya spray paint I picked up at the hobby store. I did my best to spread the paint around, and I did my best to get around while spreading the paint around. It's a little bit difficult when I'm not using a turntable, which I should have been using. I let the paint sit for a bit, and then I'd give it another coat, and I think it turned out okay. Once this base coat of paint was dry enough, that, or at least what I considered to be dry enough, I shook up the model paints, got myself some cheap brush, and decided to paint on the darker orange color first. And I, I gotta tell you, I'm not an artist, and I either really suck at painting, or these brushes are terrible. I'm willing to bet it's a bit of both. I also didn't mask off any areas because I thought I could get by with the brush itself, but looking back, I know I probably should have masked off the areas that I didn't want to get this darker orange on. When the darker orange was covering everything it needed to, I got out the black paint from Tamiya and started painting everything that needed to be black. And just like the orange paint, my artistic skill was not coming through with these brushes. So either I lack skill or these brushes are terrible or it's a bit of both. All that was left to do once the black paint was on was to let it dry and then to take a look at my results. Now let's talk about these results. From afar, this doesn't look too bad, but look at this, just zoom in right here. There we go, it looks terrible. It looks awful terrible. I did not do a good job. And I think <laughs> I'm glad I started with this small block because I wanted to learn. And I, I took some of the tips from Bill that I had learned over at Punish Props and I tried to apply these here, but I didn't use enough of what I've learned from Bill, unfortunately. So let's get into what I need to change before I attempt painting the big block. The first thing I noticed is that I can still see layer lines, and I think that's because of two things. I think one, I didn't sand enough, which is crazy to think about, but I know it's true. And two, I didn't use a filler primer. And a filler primer is something you can spray on and then sand away, and it fills in some of the ridges of some of these print lines in order to make a smooth surface. Thankfully in this print, there were no missing spaces of filament or places where the filament had messed up, so I didn't have to fill in anything. That's good. Next, I think what I should have done is masked off the areas that I didn't want to get certain paints on. Once I applied the base coat, and let it dry properly. I think masking off some of these shapes would have been a really good idea and would have enabled me to paint better. And tied to that, I think I probably should have let the paint dry a little bit longer than I did. The brushes I picked up were super cheap camel hair brushes, or at least the label said camel hair, but I, I don't know anything about brushes at all. So I, I assume they're okay, but for detail painting, I think I may need to invest in better brushes. I think better brushes along with masking is going to be the key to producing a better overall result. And finally, I think it would be proper for me to invest in an airbrush and learn how to airbrush things. I did get a little bit of a tutorial when I was helping Bill over at Punish Props build the lightsaber holts that uh, Sean Charlesworth had uh, modeled and then we printed on the, the Form 2. But 
I think beyond that, uh, I, I think that once things are masked off, I think an airbrush is going to be better at applying color more even across the surface. At least that's the hope. Now that I've kind of done a lessons learned on this small block, it's time to get to work on the big block. The big block did have some problems where the filament didn't lay down correctly or curled up or, or just some general issues like that. So I used a Bondo type material to fill in those gaps. I spread the Bondo on with these plastic squeegees and it seemed to do a, a decent job. I was able to fill in all of the problem areas where the filament didn't work out. Working with this glazing putty was interesting because I had never really worked with it before and it has a time limit from which you for which you can use on it. When you start applying it it's creamy but then as you start moving it around it starts to roll a little bit and you know once it starts to roll I, I think that's the limit at which you're allowed to play with it. You need to be quick or scrape it off and apply some fresh stuff. Once the first layer dried, I used a really rough sanding sponge to go over and knock down all of that uh, glazing putty that I put on and make it better. Once I got all that glazing putty knocked down a bit, I sanded it down a bit, I did do a second layer of it and I used that same squeegee plastic thing that I used and it, it started going on better and I took what I learned from the first application and I tried to not let it get it to that point where it would ball up or roll up and I tried to apply it while it was still creamy, creamy smooth. The directions for this glazing putty said to do many small layers rather than one large application because it's gonna dry better. So in my third application of this stuff, I, I started to really get the hang of it. I started to fill it out and on the corners, I started to really form solid straight lines and I think the results are decent. Before I tell you the next steps for the big block, let's get a word from our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. Oh, hey, how's it going, you guys? Uh, you know, 3D printing is one thing and printing things takes a while, but finishing things, holy cow, it takes a ton of time. But thankfully, I have something like The Great Courses Plus, which is today's video sponsor, and I can learn cool things that I'm interested in while I'm sitting here finishing a print. The Great Courses Plus is a video learning subscription service with great courses from professors in the Ivy League and other great universities. They also feature experts from other places such as the Smithsonian or National Geographic or the Culinary Institute of America. Once logged in, you'll find more than 7,000 different great learning videos on topics such as math, history, science, art, and you can even learn new things like how to cook or how to play chess. The one I'm on though right now is called The Mysteries of Modern Physics, Time. It's a series of lectures by Professor Sean Carroll from the California Institute of Technology. He talks about time being the fourth dimension, but as third dimension humans can only experience the fourth dimension sequentially. Plus, we all live 80 milliseconds in the past, apparently. It's so crazy nerdy. I just absolutely love this stuff. And who knows, maybe learning more about time from Professor Sean Carroll will make me make better use of my time. Sponsors like The Great Courses Plus are what allow me to bring really fun, interesting content to the channel. Plus, you know, when you support my sponsors, that's in effect supporting me. So if you can, head on over to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash 3D Printing Nerd or click the link down in the description and you can start your free trial today. All right, I wanna get back to my lecture on time and I gotta finish this big block. Thanks. Sponsorship like that really does enable me and my channel to get some cool stuff, such as this airbrush. So I went to Harbor Freight and I picked up this airbrush. It was on sale. And this is what I'm gonna use on the big block. I, I can use the same Tamiya paints and a little bit of a thinner to thin it out and then hopefully use this airbrush kit to spray down the big block. Of course, I already have blue masking tape. Everybody that has a 3D printer usually has some of that. I also picked up some filler primer and I got that at the Home Depot. And I should be able to get the big block really smooth and, and get all the cracks filled in and then, and then hopefully apply some paint and see where it goes from there. This is really exciting. I've never, I've never been one to finish my 3D prints. I've always been one that said, hey, 3D prints look cool because they look 3D printed. And then I met Bill from Punished Props and I got to see the cool stuff that he made and, and how he sanded things and smoothed things and made things look. And uh, Garrett over at Chaos Cortec and his wife, they, they model these great things and then she paints them and they look amazing. And I, I didn't really get it. I didn't really think I had the skills to do it 
either until I started practicing on this small block. And it's, even though this isn't the best paint job whatsoever, this is my first, and it gave me the confidence to keep going and to keep learning and to keep trying. So if there's anything that you can take from this personally, don't be afraid to try. Get out some sandpaper and, and just sand a print down a little bit. Try to get that area nice and smooth. See if you can do it. And if you can, maybe go get some cheap primer and spray it on and then sand it down to fill in some of those lines. And once you've done that, why don't you go to a local hobby store and get some model car paint and maybe just paint it a color. See how it works out. That's, that's all I'm doing. And if I can do it, you can bet you can do it. All right, you know what? I got some work to do, so let's let's get going. Hey, a big thanks to everybody who's watching. A big thanks to my sponsor of this video, The Great Courses Plus. I really appreciate it. I really hope you subscribe to the channel, and if you do, I really hope you ring that bell to get notified of when cool stuff like this gets posted. A big thanks to all my patrons who support me at patreon.com, and a really big thanks to everybody that lets the ads play. Those really, really help out the channel. And finally, you know what? Don't forget to hug each other more because I really love you guys. As always, high five.